The James Webb Space Telescope has just delivered the most detailed observation yet of three, I-Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar object. New findings indicate it may be far larger than scientists originally believed, forcing a re-evaluation of how other star systems eject debris and what kinds of bodies truly drift through interstellar space. A visitor from another stellar neighborhood had arrived on July 1, 2025. The Atlas Survey Telescope in Chile noticed something odd, a dim object streaking across the sky. At first glance, it resembled a normal comet, but its motion, speed, and entry angle quickly suggested otherwise. This was not a body native to our solar system. Its orbit was hyperbolic, its velocity too great for the sun's gravity to hold it. Soon the confirmation came. This was 3I Atlas C 2025N1, the third interstellar object ever detected. Unlike 1I Oumuamua in 2017 and 2I Borisov in 2019, this one was spotted well in advance, giving astronomers months to investigate before it approached the sun. That early detection transformed it from a fleeting curiosity into a rare scientific window. Its interstellar nature was not a trivial detail, everything about it, from its composition to its behavior, might break the patterns we expect from comets formed in our own system. Its three-dimensional trajectory sliced across the ecliptic, a sign of an origin chosen at random. That randomness was a clue in itself, hinting at the architecture of other planetary systems light years away. As one astronomer said, this object was born beneath a foreign sky, and studying it felt like receiving a postcard from another star. The real mystery of 3i Atlas didn't start with its size. It began with its arrival, fast, unbound, and rewriting expectations as it moved through our view of the cosmos. Why size matters, nucleus versus coma. When people ask how big a comet is, they imagine a solid sphere of ice and rock. But what we see in the sky can be deceiving. The glowing cloud, the coma, is not the nucleus itself, but an expanding envelope of gas and dust blown off from the solid core. That core is often hidden by the coma's brightness. This made 3 I Atlas particularly challenging. Early Hubble observations set an upper limit on the nucleus at roughly 5 to 6 kilometers in diameter. Yet infrared readings from observatories on Earth hinted it could be dramatically larger, possibly 40 to 50 kilometers, depending on how efficiently it reflects sunlight and radiates heat. Size matters because a bigger nucleus means more mass, more frozen volatiles, and a deeper or more violent history. It could mean 3i Atlas formed near the CO2 snow line of its home system or wandered through interstellar space for millions of years, losing layers of material as it traveled. But if it truly is that large, why haven't similar objects been seen before? This sparked debate. A big interstellar body would imply a large population of similar wanderers, yet only three have been detected. Some argued that our instruments simply weren't sensitive enough until recently. In the end, Unraveling its size is key to tracing its origin. And for that, scientists needed a clearer view than Hubble could give, so they turned to the James Webb Space Telescope. On August 6, 2025, JWST centered its gaze on this rare traveler. Using its powerful near-infrared spectrograph, NIR spec, Webb collected data that Earth-based telescopes cannot. It didn't just capture an image, it analyzed the object's chemical fingerprint while optical telescopes struggle to see through dusty comas. Webb's infrared capability cuts straight through, detecting molecules such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other volatiles essential for understanding where the object formed and what its nucleus contains. This also offered an indirect way to estimate its size, since the rate at which gas escapes depends on how much active surface is exposed. This isn't just about spotting something new. A mission scientist said, it's about uncovering what it's made of and what its composition reveals about its birthplace. With Webb's observations, researchers began to reconstruct the object's behavior, its gas output, dust release, and the surface area required to produce them. These pieces helped establish constraints on the nucleus and hinted at its true scale. More importantly, Webb transformed 3i Atlas from an intriguing mystery into a model for how future interstellar objects will be studied, measured not only by light, but by chemistry. 
and what Webb uncovered in its spectrum pointed to something unusual, a chemical profile unlike what we typically see in comets formed here. The chemistry Webb revealed wasn't standard cometary composition. Its data showed a remarkably high CO2 to H2O ratio, much higher than that of most solar system comets. This raised immediate questions. Normally, comets from our system release far more water vapor than carbon dioxide. But three, Iatlas appeared to invert that balance. This suggested two possibilities. Either it formed far from its parent star in a region where CO2 ice remains stable, or it has traveled through interstellar space for enormous lengths of time, slowly depleting its more fragile ices. Both scenarios pointed to an object ancient, frigid, and distinctly alien, possibly originating beyond the outer boundaries of its system, or even from a type of star system altogether unlike our own. Chemistry is memory. An astrochemist remarked, it tells you where an object came from, what it endured, and how long it has been wandering. The elevated CO2 levels also indicated another factor. The outgassing web measured required a relatively large active surface area that implied a bigger nucleus or an exceptionally porous, highly active one with more exposed volatile material than expected. Each spectral signature became a clue. Webb wasn't merely observing the coma. It was unpacking the object size, internal structure, and cosmic journey molecule by molecule. The true size debate, from kilometers to tens of kilometers. At the heart of the free I Atlas mystery lies a question that resists any straightforward conclusion. How large is it actually? For most comets, the brightness we see is dominated by the coma, a diffuse halo of gas and dust that expands as the comet warms. But when the object comes from another star system, one with no direct comparison in our catalogs, estimating the true dimensions of its nucleus becomes far more difficult. Early measurements from the Hubble Space Telescope offered a conservative limit, suggesting the core was no bigger than about 5.6 kilometers across, based on reflected sunlight and how the coma behaved in visible wavelengths. Yet thermal data from infrared surveys pointed to something much larger. Some analyses pushed the diameter toward nearly 46 kilometers, depending on assumptions about albedo, surface reflectivity, and how efficiently its material retains or radiates heat. This huge range set off a vigorous scientific debate. Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb and others proposed that if the infrared interpretation held up, 3i Atlas would not only be the largest interstellar visitor ever found, but also a sign that massive icy bodies might be far more common throughout the galaxy. That would reshape theories of planet formation and the mechanisms that fling such objects out of their home systems. But the idea wasn't universally accepted. Opposing voices argued that an object so massive should generate more visible dust, create a denser coma, and appear brighter in several wavelengths than what telescopes recorded. And if large interstellar comets like this were plentiful, why haven't more been spotted? As one planetary scientist put it, if it's truly 40 kilometers wide, we have to rethink what we believe about how planetary systems lose material. That's a tremendous amount of mass to eject. Despite the uncertainty, data from Webb helped narrow the possibilities by calculating how much gas and dust the object releases each second. Researchers can infer the minimum surface area required to maintain that level of activity. Too small a nucleus wouldn't produce enough outflow. Too large a one would create a coma and brightness profile that doesn't match observations. Still, the issue remains unresolved. Different models yield different sizes depending on assumptions about composition, surface roughness, and how efficiently the nucleus absorbs or reflects sunlight. And unless a telescope can someday capture the nucleus directly, a nearly impossible task at such distances, the disagreement will continue. What is certain, however, is that 3i Atlas is forcing astronomers to reset expectations. It may not just surpass Borisov or Oumuamua in scale. It may exceed what we thought interstellar objects were capable of being. Activity and outgassing, evidence of size and internal motion. When you can't see the nucleus itself, you study its behavior, and 3i Atlas is showing plenty. Since its discovery, astronomers have tracked its coma, its tail, and the continuous release of volatile materials into space. These jets and streams of dust and gas aren't random. They reveal both the chemistry of the object and the physical processes occurring at its surface. 
Webb detected a mixture of tiny ice grains, larger dust particles, and distinct CO2-rich jets. These eruptions point to active vents originating from specific regions, possibly fractures or sunlit areas where buried ices vaporize rapidly. This level of outgassing directly relates to the amount of surface area available. A nucleus only a few kilometers wide would find it difficult to sustain such strong activity unless almost every part of it was exposed and actively sublimating. This behavior points toward either a nucleus larger than originally assumed or one with extreme porosity filled with tunnels, cavities, and internal channels where trapped gases could build up pressure and burst outward. You can't produce this much gas from a simple compact snowball. One mission scientist remarked, there's structure here, deep layers, active pockets, maybe even heat-retaining regions. For three, I Atlas, the way it moves and reacts to solar heating is helping researchers sketch the hidden architecture of an object we cannot directly see. The speed and direction of the jets influence the shape of a coma and even push the object slightly away from its predicted path, an effect known as non-gravitational acceleration. This subtle shift, measured with exceptional accuracy, allows scientists to understand how these jets propel the nucleus, giving them an indirect way to estimate its mass and surface behavior. And once again, the object's interstellar origin becomes important. Unlike comets from our own system, bodies that have been repeatedly warmed by the sun, interstellar objects may still contain untouched ices, materials that have never experienced intense heating. As these pristine ices begin to vaporize, they release particles and energy in different patterns, often more forcefully and unexpectedly than ordinary comets. All of the outgassing observed by Webb and ground-based telescopes creates a dynamic signature, a shifting blend of motion, brightness, and chemistry that reveals how large the nucleus must be to sustain such active behavior. 3 I Atlas is no passive. I see remnant drifting on autopilot. It's alive with activity expressive in its jets, and through that behavior it reveals how much surface area, how much mass, and how much ancient history it carries as it makes its way out of our solar system. Why this size and object changes the rules. If 3 I Atlas truly spans 30 to 46 kilometers, it becomes the largest interstellar object ever found, and that shifts the entire conversation. The two earlier visitors, Umiwamiwa and Borisov, were significantly smaller, yet this one may be 10 times larger, carrying more mass, more momentum, and the resilience to endure violent conditions in a distant system before eventually drifting into ours. This isn't just a passerby, it's a survivor of ancient upheaval. A planetary formation researcher remarked, its size hints at an even broader implication that massive interstellar objects could be far more common than previously assumed. For years, Scientists believe such bodies were exceedingly rare or too faint to detect. But if something this large slipped past unnoticed until now, we may be overlooking many more. It pushes against existing ideas about how star systems form planets and how they eject material. Perhaps they launch not just fragments but fully developed, planet-sized bodies. And if such giants roam freely, they might carry organic compounds, seed new worlds, or even pose risks as wandering hazards. 3. I Atlas isn't merely a comet. It's evidence of a more dynamic galaxy, one filled with ancient travelers, silent messengers, and stories waiting to be discovered. It forces us to wonder how many others drift through the dark, unseen, the limits of the data, and what Webb added. Even with the James Webb Space Telescope's extraordinary capabilities, one thing remains beyond reach, a direct view of 3. I Atlas's nucleus. Webb uncovered complex chemistry and precise rates of outgassing, yet the core itself stays hidden behind its luminous coma. This isn't a flaw, it's a matter of physical limits. The nucleus is tiny, the coma immense, and no current instrument can fully separate them, especially with the object racing through space. Instead, astronomers rely on indirect clues, variations in brightness, models that estimate dust versus gas release, and careful measurements of infrared energy. These techniques aren't perfect, but they tighten the possible range of sizes. Webb contributed most by identifying CO2, H2O, and carbon monoxide 
key ingredients needed to calculate how much active surface is required to produce the observed gas output. That narrowed the size estimates considerably. Webb didn't hand us a photograph. A NASA researcher explained, but it gave us a chemical silhouette. Still, many variables remain uncertain, albedo, grain size, thermal behavior, so scientists can only speak in ranges rather than exact figures. Yet the unknown grows smaller. Webb has drawn us closer. Even if the nucleus remains a distant outline, a target we can study but not quite grasp. And that mystery is part of what makes 3 I Atlas so intriguing. It always stays just beyond reach. What comes next? Size, departure path, and future visitors. On October 29, 2025, 3 I Atlas reached perihelion, its nearest point to the sun. Once it was within 36 astronomical units. Now, as it moves outward, its coma dims, dust production fades, and a rare chance appears, a clearer glimpse of the nucleus itself, with less activity masking it. Astronomers may finally be able to detect the core more directly, refining size estimates and analyzing its surface. Facilities like the VLT, ALMA, and Hubble are already preparing follow-up observations before 3 I Atlas slips permanently into deep space. Looking ahead, the upcoming Vera Rubin Observatory, scheduled to begin operations in 2026, will scan the entire sky repeatedly, likely catching many more interstellar visitors. With early detection, scientists will be able to respond faster, deploying the best instruments while these objects are still accessible. Next time, our approach will be even sharper. A planetary defense expert commented, 3 I Atlas has become a framework rather than a single event. Its once uncertain size raised important questions, and now it shapes the strategy for how future interstellar bodies will be studied. As it departs, it leaves behind a guide, a blueprint for understanding how the galaxy sends us travelers and how we must be prepared to interpret them. The broader view, why the true size matters for humanity's understanding. In astronomy, Size is more than a measurement. It captures origin, age, and cosmic evolution. For 3 I Atlas, the nucleus's dimensions connect its formation, its behavior, and what it reveals about the universe. A small nucleus might indicate broken fragments from a disrupted planetesimal. A large one suggests origins in major planet-forming regions of a young star system. Either way, its chemistry, its path, and its activity all circle back to the question of scale. But beyond the physical measurement is its significance. For the first time, humanity isn't merely noticing interstellar objects, we're analyzing them in detail. Instruments like JWST let us map their molecular signatures, their dynamics, and their internal processes. If 3 I Atlas truly is massive, it means other systems frequently create and eject large bodies filling the galaxy with ancient matter. These wanderers may carry clues, or even ingredients, for life from places we will never visit. Our solar system isn't isolated. It's part of a vast network, a crossroads in a galactic passageway. As one web scientist noted, each interstellar object is a quiet message from beyond. When we measure its size, we're measuring our place in that greater story, listening as it unfolds. Traveler by traveler, thanks to Webb, we're no longer speculating, we're quantifying. 3. I Atlas isn't simply a large comet. It's a signal from another system, showing that the space between stars is far from empty. It's alive with ancient voyagers, and with every new discovery, our understanding expands. Just like the enormous object we nearly overlooked,